to all other institutions organized in the interest of the wage earner has been added the national savings bank system that makes loans to men of small means that enables the farmer and the working man to buy a little garden and build a house while at the same time insuring the working man against accident and sickness belgium is a poor man's country it has been said because institutions have been administered in the interest of the men of small affairs the great belgian plain in history but the institutions of belgium and the industrial prosperity of her people alone are not equal to the explanation of her unique heroism long ago in his commentaries julius caesar said that gaul was inhabited by three tribes the belgae the aquitani the celts of whom the belgae were the bravest History will show that Belgians have courage as their native right, for only the brave could have survived. The southeastern part of Belgium is a series of rock plains, and if these plains have been her good fortune in times of peace, they have furnished the battlefields of Western Europe for 2,000 years. Northern France and Western Germany are rough, jagged, and wooded, but the Belgian plains were ideal battlefields. For this reason, the generals of Germany and of France have usually met and struggled for the mastery on these wide Belgian plains. On one of these grounds, Julius Caesar won the first battle that is recorded. Then came King Clovis and the French with their campaigns. Toward these plains also the Saracens were hurrying when assaulted by Charles Martel. On the Belgian plains the Dutch burghers and the Spanish armies, led by Bloody Alva, fought out their battle. Hither, too, came Napoleon, and the great mound of Waterloo is the monument to the Duke of Wellington's victory. It was to the Belgian plains also that the German general, last August, rushed his troops. Every college and every city searches for some level spot of land where the contest between opposing teams may be held. And for more than two thousand years the Belgian plain has been the scene of the great battles between the warring nations of Western Europe. Now, out of all these collisions there has come a hardy race, inured to peril, rich in fortitude, loyalty, patience, thrift, self-reliance, and persevering faith. For five hundred years the Belgian children and youth have been brought up upon the deeds of noble renown achieved by their ancestors. If Julius Caesar were here today, he would wear Belgium's bravery like a bright sword girded to his thigh. And when this brave little people, with a standing army of 42,000 men, single-handed defied two millions of Germans, it tells us that Ajax has come back once more to defy the god of lightnings. A thrilling chapter from Belgium's history. Perhaps one or two chapters torn from the pages of Belgium history will enable us to understand her present-day heroism, just as one golden bough plucked from the forest will explain the richness of the autumn. You remember that Venice was once the financial center of the world. Then, when the bankers lost confidence in the navy of Venice, they put their jewels and gold into saddlebags and moved the financial center of the world to Nuremberg because its walls were seven feet thick and twenty feet high. Later, about 1500 A.D., the discovery of the new world turned all the peoples into races of seagoing folk and the English and Dutch captains vied with the sailors of Spain and Portugal. 
No captains were more prosperous than the mariners of Antwerp. In 1568 there were 500 marble mansions in this city on the Meurs. Belgium became a casket filled with jewels. Then it was that Spain turned covetous eyes northward. Sated with his pleasures, broken by indulgence and passion, the Emperor Charles V resigned his gold and throne to his son, King Philip. Finding his coffers depleted, Philip sent the Duke of Alva, with 10,000 Spanish soldiers, out on a looting expedition. Their approach filled Antwerp with consternation, for her merchants were busy with commerce and not with war. The sack of Antwerp by the Spaniards makes up a revolting page in history. Within three days, 8,000 men, women and children were massacred, and the Spanish soldiers, drunk with wine and blood, hacked, drowned and burned like fiends that they were. The Belgian historian tells us that 500 marble residences were reduced to blackened ruins. One incident will make the event stand out. When the Spaniards approached the city, a wealthy burgher hastened the day of his son's marriage. During the ceremony, the soldiers broke down the gate of the city and crossed the threshold of the rich man's house. When they had stripped the guests of their purses and gems, unsatisfied, they killed the bridegroom, slew the men, and carried the bride out into the night. The next morning, a young woman, crazed and half-clad, was found in the street, searching among the dead bodies. At last she found a youth, whose head she lifted upon her knees, over which she crooned her songs, as a young mother soothes her babe. A Spanish officer passing by, humiliated by the spectacle, ordered a soldier to use his dagger and put the girl out of her misery. The Horrors of the Inquisition Having looted Antwerp, the treasure chest of Belgium, the Spaniards set up the Inquisition as an organized means of securing property. It is the strange fact that the Spaniard has excelled in cruelty as other nations have excelled in art or science or invention. Spain's cruelty to the Moors and the rich Jews forms one of the blackest chapters in history. Inquisitors became fiends. Moors were starved, tortured, burned, flung in wells. Jewish bankers had their tongues thrust through little iron rings. Then the end of the tongue was seared that it might swell, and the banker was led by a string in the ring through the streets of the city. The women and the children were put on rafts that were pushed out into the Mediterranean Sea. When the swollen corpses drifted ashore, the plague broke out. And when that black plague spread over Spain, it seemed like the justice of outraged nature. The expulsion of the Moors was one of the deadliest blows ever struck at science, commerce, art and literature. The historian tracks Spain across the continents by a trail of blood. Wherever Spain's hand has fallen, it has paralyzed. From the days of Cortes, wherever her captains have given a pledge, the tongue that spake has been mildewed with lies and treachery. The wildest beasts are not in the jungle. Man is the lion that rends, man is the leopard that tears, man's hate is the serpent that poisons. And the Spaniard entered Belgium to turn a garden into a wilderness. Within one year, 1568, Antwerp, that began with 125,000 people, ended it with 50,000. Many multitudes were put to death by the sword and stake. 
but many, many thousands fled to England to begin anew their lives as manufacturers and mariners. And for years Belgium was one quaking peril, an inferno whose torturers were Spaniards. The visitor in Antwerp is still shown the rack upon which they stretched the merchants that they might yield up their hidden gold. The painted lady may be seen. Opening her arms, she embraces the victim. The Spaniard, with his spear, forced the merchant into the deadly embrace. As the iron arms concealed in velvet folded together, one spike passed through each eye, another through the mouth, another through the heart. The painted lady's lips were poisoned, so that a kiss was fatal. The dungeon whose sides were forced together by screws, so that each day the victim saw his cell growing less and less, and knew that soon he would be crushed to death, was another instrument of torture. Literally thousands of innocent men and women were burned alive in the marketplace. There is no more piteous tragedy in history than the story of the decline and ruin of this superbly prosperous literary and artistic country. And yet out of the ashes came new courage. Burned, broken, the Belgians and the Dutch were not beaten. Pushed at last into Holland, where they united their fortunes with the Dutch, they cut the dikes of Holland and let in the ocean, and clinging to the dikes with their fingertips, fought their way back to the land. But no sooner had the last of the Spaniards gone than out of their rags and poverty they founded a university as a monument to the providence of God in delivering them out of the hands of their enemies. For the sixteenth century, in the form of a brave knight, wears little Belgium and Holland like a red rose upon his heart.